Good morning, good morning, good morning, you lovely lot. It is Sunday, but today's vlog will not be Sunday. Today's vlog will be last weekend's vlog of me in Coventry with Lee and Daryl and Keith having a mooch around Coventry together. So um, let's go back in time. Ooh, have fun. Good morning, good morning, good morning, you lovely lot. We've been sent to Coventry. I don't know what we've done wrong. Uh, but we haven't done anything wrong. We've been sent to Coventry by Daryl and Keith for good reasons. Keith has managed to get hold of, for a very good price, the fan to replace the fan in the cab here of Spog. Um, so, this seems to be the midpoint, an hour from each of us. So we're meeting in Coventry. I've never been to Coventry before and I'm not actually sure why there is the saying that being sent to Coventry means you've done something wrong. I need to Google that while we're here and find out so I can share it with you. A little bit of info. Lee's gone to get a ticket. We are parked in the lower Ford car park, which looks quite empty. It does have closed circuit TV in operation, which is good. Um, and it doesn't have a height barrier, which is why we've parked here. And it's just a short walk from the cathedral and the town centre. The prices are quite expensive. Um, I think it was something like £2 for one hour or something. I'm not sure how much it is. Leo, I'm sure, tell me in a minute when he's got the ticket um, how much it is for five hours, which is what we're going to do because we're going to stay till sort of four o'clock-ish and then head home. Um, but yes, it's, it is quite pricey and I don't know if that is standard for all car parks in the area or if this is a particularly pricey car park, but there is a useful app well not useful app a, a useful um section on their county website or council website that daryl sent me a link to and it tells you which car parks there are and which ones have height restrictions and what the height restrictions are and which ones have no height restrictions whatsoever he's doing this he's doing this i don't know what that means i'll go and check i think we've got problems with the paying for the ticket I got it working. So it's six pounds for five hours. Um, we probably don't need five hours. I was just looking, we probably only needed four hours, but I'd rather have a bit more and not worry about it than I would, you know, run out and feel panicked. So we've, we've put six pounds in and that'll do us. This is a very unusual building with all sorts of weird angles and a tunnel that goes through to another building. It's very, very strange. This is quite nice. This looks like it's been done up, maybe not that long ago. And it's the uni, isn't it? Coventry Uni. Yep. And then straight ahead, it's Coventry Cathedral. Or what's left of Coventry Cathedral. I'm really liking this. This whole new, new, and then really old kind of backdrop against it. And they've incorporated bits of the old ruins into the modern buildings, but done it really tastefully. I mean, look at this building here with all the stained glass windows. That's very tastefully done. So each one of these windows has some sort of stained glass pattern on it. So is that part of the new cathedral where they still do services and it's attached to the old cathedral maybe? I think that might be the case. I think this might be, because there's a cross up there, I think this might be the new cathedral as in the bit that's being used and it's all attached to the remains and the ruins of the old cathedral there. Really is quite pretty. Should we have a walk around there on our way back, Lee, before we go back to the car? It's a very French sounding... Uh, French Quarter. The French Quarter, is it? Uh, what are they called? Busca? Well, that's interesting as well. These lovely old homes down the side there. It's a lovely place.
love the old cobbled streets. Right, I want to go up here, love. Tudor building. The beautiful lead windows. Wines and spirits. It says the Golden Cross Inn was built circa 1583, much restored. One of the most dramatic examples of medieval timber framed buildings to survive in Coventry with oversailing or jetted upper floors on exposed timbers. So that's this bit here where it staggers out. It's just beautiful. Tudor buildings are just amazing. And how they're still standing. Well, they're still standing because they were well built. I don't know why old banks were all built the same way, but they all have a very similar look to them. Look at this amazing door. It's part of the NatWest Bank. Look at that, isn't that something else? Very Roman images. Chariots. Somebody defeating a serpent. There's trouble. <laughs> Hi! Put your heads back, I'll get a nice picture of you together. Lovely. Gluten free. I'm loving the cup. And it's all loose leaf. Mm, property. Oh, look, actually, that might be a bit nice. <laughs> That's to go on there. And this is amazing. We can highly recommend the bean and leaf as a good spot. That there, that there naked lady, is Lady Godiva. Was a late Anglo-Saxon noblewoman, uh, the wife of Leofric, Earl of Mercia, and she rode it on horseback naked through the streets of Coventry to gain remission in the oppressive taxation system that her husband had imposed on the, on his tenants. So it was a protest, one of the first, well, you, one of the first protests, which is a benefactress of Coventry. So. I got that too. <laughs> I think I should go and check out the plaque over there and let's find some history about Coventry Cathedral. Apparently this was bombed in the war, which is why it's in the state it's in. It says on the board that we're standing in the sacred landscape with three cathedrals around us. The remains of this one here, and then there's the earliest one, which is the ruins, not these ruins, but these ruins, which we've not yet located. The great medieval Benedictine Priory Cathedral, founded by, by Earl Leofric and Lady Godiva in 1043 and was pulled down after the Reformation the only cathedral in England to be deliberately destroyed. Then, uh, the dramatic ruins of medieval St. Michael's. So is, was this St. Michael's? Yeah. This one was St. Michael's because that's Holy Trinity, isn't it? That one over there. So this one is St. Michael's. This one was opened in... 1962, that can't be right. That can't be right, because that's was, after it, the war. It was destroyed in 1940. Yeah, <laughs> so this can't be St. Michael's then. That's St. Michael's. Where? 
the, that one over there. Okay, the so the new the bit. This is, this, is, this is the medieval church. This is the medieval church. The, spirit, the new church. The new church that it's attached to through this bit yeah. here that we Resolved saw on my way up. I was going to say that does that makes more sense because mm. this was destroyed in 1940. In 1940, during the Second World War by enemy bombing. Oh, the medieval church became the second cathedral in 1918. Yeah, this, that's the third one, the new one. Right. The old cathedral was reborn in the building of the present cathedral. Very different in style. Medieval Gothic leading to modernism, but two halves of one whole. That was what I was talking about as we walked up here to start with how the old and the new work really well together. That's, that's surprising because I actually said to Keith, I didn't read this before, but when we're walking past, I said, I suppose it's like a symbol in the new cathedral, like a phoenix rising from the flames. And that's what they've put here. That's what it says. And I haven't read that before. The new so. cathedral was built on a symbol of renewal, of reconciliation and hope, a triumph of love over hate, like a phoenix from the flames. Great beauty grew out of great destruction. Well, there you go. You had the same idea as them. I did, and I, I amaze myself sometimes. You do. You amaze me daily. <laughs> I guess this would have been the entrance. Nice vaulted entrance. And then it's currently missing its roof. Bombs will do that, won't they? I do like though how it's been attached. Yes, it's. They've done it really sympathetically, I think. So, and the brickwork being very similar, and I like it. There's the tower. What's left of the pillars that would have held the vaulted roof. The Dyer's Chapel. I bet you get a completely different feel if you were walking around with cloudy skies. It's a bit like Tintagel Castle um, in Cornwall. I've walked around that on days when it's been really stormy and you get a completely different feel to walking around it during sunny days. The atmosphere completely changes. I've got what's left of some tombs. capstones on them as I went into the ruined cathedral on the morning after the destruction there flashed into my mind the deep certainty that as the cathedral had been crucified with Christ so it would rise again with him how or when we could not tell nor did it matter the cathedral would rise again these are the words of Provost R.T. Howard from his book Ruined and Rebuilt. The only things to survive the bombing in uh, November of 1940 was the effigy of the first bishop and the tower. And that's the entrance to the new church or new cathedral right next door and still incorporated into the old one all those angels on the uh, window just spotted this and it reminds me of a Led Zeppelin song. Give us your words. There's a lady who's sure all that glitters is gold and she's buying a stairway to heaven. If heaven is less than six foot tall. Yes. I think they might have uh, lost some of their stairs.
I'm not sure how easy this is to see on the camera, but that is an artist's impression of what it would have looked like, or did look like. This seems quite appropriate at the moment, with everything that's going on in the world. It says here, both sculptures remind us that in the face of destructive forces, human dignity and love will triumph over disaster and bring nations together in respect and peace. And I'd like to think that's what's going on with the Ukraine right now. What was that? <laughs> I was just thinking how intricate this is actually. Take two, take two. Shut take it. Two. Could you loiter as loiter somewhere else, please? Hold on. The naughty boy and the one who taught Shift. Shoo. Do what you're about to do. Still trying. Shoo, I'm the director here. <laughs> Bogski offski, please. Go away. I'm here all week. I wish you weren't. I was just looking at how beautiful and intricate this carving is on the doors or on this door well there are two doors I suppose it is plural I don't know how old that door is I can't imagine that is well I don't know maybe that is the original door because this bit did survive didn't it the tower so yeah maybe it's beautiful though Oh, look at the face. In the corners. Everywhere you look, you can see Roman influence. 22 and 23 Bailey Lane, the cottage built about, is that 1,500? 1,500. 1,500 is the only remaining example of numerous medieval timber framed houses which stood in this area. Notable for its original carved and terraced woodwork, chimneys were added in the 17th century and the shop window is early 19th century. Number 23 is a fine example of late 18th century refronting of a much older building. I do love Tudor buildings. make buildings like this like with this much we couldn't, afford to. we couldn't afford to now is that what it is this is one of the things we always say when we're driving along different places we will the buildings that are built these days won't last no and they're not beautiful so the uk's oldest pub i think is um the, bees are beautiful bird cage in town isn't it it's one of the oldest the le folie yeah. bergere no you can't lead windows i was just saying to daryl and lee that that building is so close to the cathedral and okay so this bit survived but how that didn't burn down when the bomb went off i have no idea we were just talking about this building the old county hall which was built in 1783 thankfully it is a listed building so there's only so much the pub can do to change the exterior of it but it was saying that the last public execution was in this lane outside this building in 1849 because it was where the prison governor was housed and the adjoining jail which stood in Trinity Lane it was all part of this building which was the county hall the only remaining 18th century public building of architectural distinction in Coventry that is left. Loiterers. That is a magnificent big Tudor building. And it's a Weatherspoons. <laughs> oh, well, at least it's something and it's being looked after. Those little balconies as well they've got. And they've got balconies around the side on the corners. One on that corner, one on that corner.
This is where you see how Lee and I think differently. I was thinking this is like aligned chakras going up and he thought it was like a warp core going up. Where are you going? He's off to church. There was a man in this position in my van not that long ago. He could ping his head in the river. If you tickle him, I don't think he'll uh, be popular. Did, did you just do hands on healing? I did. Does this work? And you didn't actually put the part in? I plugged it in. You plugged it in? <laughs> Somebody's big feet have pulled the thing out. You're telling me mechanically you didn't notice it was unplugged. So Bigfoot's knocked it out, is what you're saying? With their big feet. Is it possible to return that part? Thank you. You want your money back now, then? Won't yes, you? I will. <laughs> He's going to say that's eighty pounds yeah. for labour. <laughs> eighty pound labour charge. <laughs> Tell you what, you can keep twenty of it for your for your good where, deed. Where is it? It's just here-ish. Just there? Just, just here-ish. Somewhere? Just, is, and it's sorted. Is it? Yeah. Alright, you know what you're talking about. No. Shall, shall I have a look and see if I can see what I should yes. have... Yeah. <laughs> Where is it? My head does not fit in that space. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yeah, it attaches to the doodah of the flange of the flamingo, and then you just turn it around and so that the wires go in respectively and respectedly and yeah but what about the fluffy bits what words do you meant to say flange yes uh just release springs release springs yes um do hickey. if i just do this yeah with a bit of wd-40 wd-40 technical knot and then i have to say to you how much does it cost and you have to go <sighs> Which bit am I looking at in and case then, it goes wrong? Then, then you have to pay Pippa for being in that position. Hold on. Hold on. I don't wish to be... You're paying him for me being in this position. Well, I'm just trying to show you. Well, how can you do that? It gets, it gets very personal. No, it's there. <laughs> see Which on the, bit? Under here, you see this, this bit. Where's the... This bit here? Yeah, that's the fan. Isn't it? There's a big fan motor here, isn't there? Uh, with electric... On the other side, this yeah, side. Right, with plugs in it. Two plugs, one at the back and one there's at the front. There's a big thing that goes into a white thing. Yeah, there's a white thing. And there's another one on further up. Let me take a photo. I can point out where. It's all done then. <laughs>